Hello everyone, this is Brad Borgman with US Green Tech. We will get to some additional introductions very soon, but first a genuine thanks to everyone joining today's webinar on the evolution of synthetic turf fields, how you can move from a traditional design to a safer, high performance system. We've got a large group today, which is really awesome, and I think uh, displays a lot of interest in this topic from all over the country. We've reserved one hour today. That includes a Q&A session towards the end. And speaking of questions, um, somewhere on the screen there, probably towards the bottom, you'll see a Q&A box. Uh, please submit any questions that you have through that Q&A box. We'll set those aside. And of course, uh, like I said earlier, get to those um, towards the back half of today's presentation. Just a quick note, um, you may also see a chat window or a chat box. We've disabled that function for today's presentation. So please, again, make sure you submit your questions through the Q&A box. Today we'll be talking through this notion of traditional versus modern or progressive systems. And to help us do that, we've got a couple other presenters and colleagues of mine. Again, my name is Brad Borgman, Director of Sales with US Green Tech. Been with the team here for about four and a half years. I've enjoyed every single minute of it. Um, have been, it's been about the last 12 hours, or sorry, the last 12 years in the uh, synthetic turf industry, and it's been a fun ride. Along with me, Andrew Adams. Andrew is based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, so please don't hold that against him. He's an Ohio native, um, which is a great thing. Andrew serves as our regional sales manager for the Northeast part of the country. And then third, Sean Garrity. Sean is our regional sales manager for the Southwest. You can hold this against him because Sean resides in sunny San Diego. So more to come from, from the two of them later on. So we've really got um, six key agenda items for today. So first we'll walk through the evolution of the synthetic turf system. We'll take a deeper dive into the in, importance of infill which is obviously what we're laser focused on here at US Green Tech. We'll review our two products, Safe, Safe Shell and Envirofill. And we're doing something uh, a little bit different, uh, hopefully very fun as well. We're gonna take you on a tour around the country and visit a lot of different project sites and talk through um, you know, what we mean by the evolution of, of our industry and of these systems through various case studies. Um, we'll also touch on the very important topic of performance testing before wrapping it up with some questions. For those that might not be as familiar with US Green Tech, we've been developing progressive info products for over 10 years, really trying to help advance the industry forward in a responsible way as it relates to uh, our environmental impact along with the safety and performance of those athletes using the fields we help create. We're also an employee-owned company, which is really cool. Um, I think you know, this mentality along with our mission of creating better turf systems together really helps foster a higher level of thought partnership and collaboration with those we work with. So moving on to the first topic of today, we wanted to define what we mean by a traditional turf system. So this design you see on the screen here has been around for at least a few decades now. You know, at the time it probably broke through some barriers for our industry. Um, as you can see, it is a sand and crumb rubber or SBR mix of infill installed into a fairly long, a relatively speaking long pile height of turf of about two and a half inches in most cases. Um, you know, this is probably a slip film turf product. Um, we've moved on to monofilaments and kind of a hybrid versions. Um, but generally speaking, this is a much uh, taller pile height with more infill. And as you can also see or notice here on the 3D model, there's no shock pad um, involved with this kind of system or this traditional system. So that sand and rubber infill and turf profile being installed directly over a compacted aggregate. You know, in these cases, infill is being asked to do a lot. It's being asked to provide performance, longevity, and of course, most importantly, it's being asked to also provide safety. I would say maybe one of the most redeeming qualities of this system is that it's still the least expensive way to build a field for, for the most part. Um, unless pristinely maintained, it's really difficult to maintain high performance and safety with this kind of design. You know, one major downfall being the, the hardness that starts to occur on the field over time 
due to infill compaction and, and UV degradation over time. You know, a high percentage of fields are still being designed in this way, actually. Um, but while state of the art during the earlier years, our industry is, is really starting to move forward and advance into new technologies. So counter to what we just defined, this is an example of what we would consider a modern or um, sometimes referred to as pro progressive field design. So still starting with that same um, or similar compacted base rock underneath, we've now incorporated in most cases a shock attenuation pad. Um, since we've incorporated this, you're actually allow or you're able to lower the pile height um, and add additional fiber material to the turf itself. Um, in most cases, in the in the form of either a dual fiber or a thatch. This will also help stabilize the infill, which you can actually now use less of. So now you can lower the pile height to say one and a half to two inches max. You can reduce the amount of infill to you know, on average five to eight pounds per square foot versus eight to 10 pounds with the older systems. Another thing to note is many of these progressive infills are, are being designed specifically for use in synthetic turf systems versus a byproduct being diverted for this use, if that makes sense. So think of this, um, really the two, two primary components. One, obviously the infill layer, the progressive infill that we're hyper-focused on today, being your performance layer and the shock pad, shock attenuation pad, can be in your safety layer with the system. To expound a bit more on the importance of infill, we're sharing this testing chart, which is from Labosport, very well respected international testing agency. This visual represents how much influence each primary component of the system can have on various safety and performance metrics, which you can actually see in the first two left hand columns. So the aspect or, or, you know, the kind of the category that we're looking at, player safety and below that playability. Um, and then if you move to the right, all of the components that we're looking at in this chart have an influence on these different properties. From shock absorption all the way down to vertical ball rebound, which you'll hear a little bit more about these uh, in the coming moments. So as you'll notice by the X's in the rows, the performance infill layer impacts each and every one of these metrics. No other component has that much influence. So I think it goes without saying, please, please, please consider selecting your infill first and designing your system around that. I think you'll be much happier in the long run. So for the next few minutes, I'll introduce our two progressive info products starting uh, with our 100% natural safe shell product. But first, since we're talking about uh, this notion of evolution, I thought it would be helpful to also comment on the evolution of natural and organic inputs. You know, US Green Tech holds a lot of appreciation for innovation and those that are innovating. It's actually one of our core values. And so we've always had an appreciation for what organic infills have intended to offer the industry. For example, natural infills can be the best way to cool surface temperatures, they can offer a natural feel underfoot, you know, and should be environmentally responsible as well. So like many of you, we have been monitoring the performance and merit of these infills since they've been gaining in popularity the last few years. We have observed that many of the benefits of organic infills, uh, infills 1.0, if you will, can come with significant trade-offs, some of which you see listed on the screen here. So from floating away, um, or heavy migration under play, um, leading to excessive top-off, um, you know, top-offs that the owner wasn't expecting, or maybe even the contractor wasn't prepared for either, uh, to drying out. You know, some products require a level of moisture to keep it in the system and, and keep it performing optimally as well. And so what you're seeing there on the left, this is actually an image taken by one of our representatives of a, of a field, I believe it was down south, um, and what you're looking at under the turf fibers is what's left um, of the infill, and that being the ballast layer. And so this was a, an organic product prior and after being exposed to the elements and the play, after a very short time, I think this was just over a year, there's really not much left of the performance infill layer, that organic layer. 
So after you know observing these infills uh, for several years, uh, we really felt we could address some of those shortcomings. So we went to work, and you know after about three to four years of R and D, we we developed and launched Safe Shell. Safe Shell is a proprietary blend of black and English walnut shells. You know we chose this material for a lot of different reasons, um, but many you see on the screen here. A, it's natural occurring and it's a renewable resource grown here in the United States, so no trees need to be cut down or, or replanted, etc. B, it's extremely durable, so this is one of the most dense nutshells in the world. C, the bulk density or weight of the product is over three times that of most other organics on the market. So the importance of this will be touched on later, but this will result in the product being the lowest maintenance organic on the market. SafeShell is now also the only USDA certified bio-based info product on the market, containing 100% bio-based content. This also means it is on the government registry of approved and preferred products. You can also cool a field surface up to 50 degrees when saturating SafeShell, but a big distinction here, and I think a key takeaway from today, the performance is not compromised whether it's wet or dry. So, Again, you're going to experience the same performance, the same reliability, the same predictability, again, whether it's wet or dry. And SafeShell comes with an eight-year warranty. So here we show the complete life cycle of SafeShell from what we like to say farm to field. Starting with the harvest uh, from California to the Midwest to our processing facilities where we also take it through a chemical-free process to remove all residu residual allergens. And then out to our project sites all around the country. Finally, after the end of the life of the field, the shells are biodegradable and can be returned back to the earth. So a huge plus, especially um, in this day and age where there's so much um, emphasis on sustainability and environmental impact. Secondly, this is our flagship product in Virofill. And Biofill has been used in well over 200 fields and actually thousands of other residential and commercial projects throughout the U.S. for over 10 years. As you'll hear more shortly, Biofill is often chosen for its durability, its low maintenance, and its consistency. Its foundation is an acrylic coated, highly round sand, which is also infused with 24-7 antimicrobial protection, which will help fight against most common bacteria strands, and in addition, mold and mildew, helping you to keep your field cleaner over time. Another major benefit is that Envirofill can be installed homogeneously, so no other ballast layer is needed, really helping to streamline the overall installation process and helping to reduce maintenance and cost of ownership. Along with the product's 16-year warranty, this is, these are all major reasons why Envirofill can also be used for a second life cycle. You'll hear more about this proof of concept later on. And just to touch again on our antimicrobial technology. So Microban is the worldwide leader in antimicrobial solutions. Microban is the actual company. It's the product that's infused into the acrylic polymer of Envirofil. We've got an exclusive relationship, exclusive partnership with Microban for use in infill products. And as mentioned earlier, uh, microban is infused into the coating of our product, giving you full-time protection against bacteria, mold, and mildew. Uh, many schools, municipalities, and, and different agencies will use this type of product to protect surfaces around their campuses. Um, surfaces such as countertops and door handles. Um, it's just one more benefit that Envirofill can offer your field as well. And as you can see on the screen, many major corporations such as Under Armour, um, Re uh, Oakley, Rubbermaid, Reebok, they all trust this technology in their products as well. Now put your seat belts on. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to go around the, the country on a uh, field tour and Mr. Andrew Adams is in the driver's seat and he's going to take over from me. Andrew? Thank you very much, Brad. I appreciate you kicking it over and getting us introduced. <clears throat> Brad and I actually have a very unique relationship. Uh, I'm jealous of Brad because at one point in his life, he could dunk a basketball. And as you guys saw in those opening slides, Brad is a little bit jealous of me because I wake up every morning and can actually comb my hair. So we've got those two things to hold over each other. 
Um, just wanted to remind you as we're going through this, we did see a couple of people raise hands. If you want to use that Q&A feature at the bottom, we're going to try to answer those questions as we go along. And if we don't get to them in the presentation, we'll make sure that we get to those in the Q&A session. So just make sure that you are using that Q&A feature on there. Brad gave you the benefits of Envirofill and SafeShell, and now Sean and I are actually going to take you to nine stops across the country to showcase uh, our fields and the solutions. So the issues that the field owners were having and how they chose our infills to meet those. The first stop is actually going to be up in Massachusetts. We have two fields that were built in 2015 and 2016, so actually before my time having the pleasure to join this team here at Ipswich High School in Newburyport High School. Now we're showcasing these because we were able to go out and get testing results. So we want you to know that when you put this field in, you should expect that performance to stay very tight over the life of your field. I'm gonna take some time to explain this chart to you because you are gonna see this, I think three more times in our presentation. First, obviously the schools over here when they were installed, and then the testing that we are actually using. So GMAX, most of you are familiar with, it's gonna be that flat cylinder missile that drops. That's gonna be more indicative of a body hitting the ground. Then as we talk about evolution in turf systems, there's also evolution in testing. That's where we come to critical fall height here. So critical fall height is actually measured in meters. And it is the height in which a spherical missile, so shaped more like a head, falls, and it's when that HIC score gets over 1,000 points. Your rotational resistance is when an athlete cuts or turns, how grippy or loose that field is. The higher the score, the grippier, the lower, uh, the looser it's going to be. Force reduction is going to be the amount of energy that actually gets lost down into the field. So when an athlete's running on that field, how much of that energy are they losing? And then opposite of that uh, is energy restitution. So how much of that energy actually gets kicked back up into their body? And then finally, vertical deformation ties in with force reduction and energy restitution. You can see that's actually measured in millimeters. And every time an athlete's cleat interacts with the surface, how much does that surface uh, deform or go down? So the reason that we're highlighting these for you here is that you can see these are all in those ranges. And I wanna just make sure that I take a moment to point out the FIFA ranges in particular for you because not one governing body covers all these tests. So the FIFA ranges were actually established from a study where they asked uh, European soccer players their top 25 favorite natural grass fields to play on. So we're trying to mimic natural grass. They then went out and tested those fields and that's where they got these ranges. So please keep in mind that these are performance preferences and not safety measures on those. But you can see after four and five years of these fields being installed, they're still performing very highly. That is due to that roundness of Envirofill as Brad was talking about those crumb rubber sand systems, the UV and then also they're using subangular sand can compact over time and make those fields more firm. Now we're going to head straight down 95 into New York City. New York City has been a long standing uh, customer using Envirofill. They've actually used Envirofill in over 25 of their sports fields and they chose Envirofill because they literally play on these fields 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I was there on a Thursday morning in the fall, and at 10 a.m., they had what looked to me to be a professional men's softball league going on. They had uniforms. They had umpires up there. So these fields, just like the city never sleeps, these fields never get to sleep. So they chose Envirofill because of that bulk density. So Envirofill actually has a bulk density that's over two times that of crumb rubber sand. So you're not getting the fly out. You're not getting that tracking away. So once you put the Envirofill in, it's in there and it stays in there. So New York City Parks and Rec actually just got a maintenance pro department about two years ago. 
So up until that point, they were just putting these fields in and letting them sit. They couldn't do anything to maintain them. So they, they chose the most durable infill that they could find to protect those turf fiber blades and make sure that they could hold up to the, uh, the action that they were going to need to get on these fields. Then we'll take you down to Brooklyn, and you can see this is just an absolutely beautiful install. What you can't see from these three full-size soccer fields out on the pier is that you're actually looking right into Manhattan on the other side. So this was a unique application where these three full-size soccer fields were put in using a different infill. Now, it was another all-natural organic infill, and after the first year, all of it had blown off into the East River. So they refilled it, and the same thing happened at year two. And at year three, they had lost all of their, their performance infill. So they came to US Green Tech, knowing the work that we had done with New York City Parks and Rec, and said, hey, what can you do to help us out with these fields? So we did a test plot using Envirofill and Safe Shell. Well, since they had already had an organic infill, they decided to stick with a, a, an all organic. So we added Safe Shell to that field in December of 2016. And I was just at that field right before the whole lockdown and the Safe Shell's still there. They're very happy uh, with the performance of those fields and it's able to last up to the tournaments that they've got going on on those. Now you East Coasters will know, we're basically gonna stay on 95 and just keep heading south. And our next stop is, is a case study that we're very proud of with UNC Chapel Hill. So the designer of this fields actually designed these fields knowing that they were gonna be in a floodplain. So we did some testing and found that the particular pad that he wanted to use needed at least seven pounds to make it so where it wouldn't float. So he took that, that recommendation and took an inch and three quarter turf added eight pounds of Envirofill to it, and they built these systems. Now, for this, it was a matter of when they were gonna flood, not if they were gonna flood. So unfortunately, six months after these fields were put in, Hurricane Florence hit the Chapel Hill area. We're going through a time lapse of photos throughout that day, and you can see how quickly the water came, and then it receded off of these fields. At the highest level, these fields took on four feet of water in that day. 24 hours later, they were bone dry and they were actually able to have the athletes back out practicing on these fields. So these three fields, or these two fields are actually used as varsity lacrosse, field hockey and soccer practice fields, and then intramural fields for the general student body. So they are able to get back out and use these fields as they were before. Now at the same time that these had taken on the four feet and rescinded, the two natural grass fields next to it still had two feet of water left on them. So the Envirofill held, held in place, it was able to keep the turf and the pad down, and they were able to, to hold these fields to the expectation that they were thinking when this flood actually hit. Now we've talked about bulk density, but I just wanted to show that to you in practice. So on our left side here, you'll see the curb next to your, your field, and you'll see the sticks and the pine cones. Now this photo was taken probably a month after that flood hit, but whenever I go to visit one of our fields or take a prospective client with me, I will always walk them on the outside of the field and just say, hey, what you're not seeing here is a bunch of infill on the outside. The infill stays in the field. It stays where you expect it. So you're gonna get that level consistent playing field over the life of the field. Now we get the opportunity to showcase our first safe shell uh, case study on this stop down in Hollandale Beach, Florida. Now I met with this owner in 2018 and he had two major concerns. It was maintenance and it was heat. So you can see the before photos, we're just showing you on the after the field, but it's a, it's a beautiful park that they completely built up uh, for this. And the owner unfortunately had seen some of those fields that Brad had talked about earlier where the performance layer uh, of the infill had risen up 
and pushed off to the sides from those heavy Florida rains. So I explained the bulk density and the specific gravity that safe shell won't float. So we took him to, to see a field. He was very happy with that. And then also wanted to make sure that it was going to hold up to those heavy Florida rains that come out of nowhere. So we we're able to, to showcase that. And then the next big question was heat. As you know, Florida, very hot, very damp, very humid. As Brad was saying, safe shell does not need water uh, for its performance. It does not need to maintain a certain moisture content, and it's going to perform relatively the same, wet or dry. Now, you can see on this field, I talked to the, our representative that was actually down there to take these. It was 95 that day, but there was a heavy rain event the night before. So you can see the safe shell on the outside where the water had drained off the field at 98 degrees. And at the highest point in the middle of the field where the water had drained off the most quickly, it was at 134 degrees. Now at this same time, you can see that Firefly uh, testing agency that we also partner with had showed in their lab under the same conditions that a crumb rubber sand system could be up in, up in the 160s. So we're significantly lowering that heat on the field. You can see dry, safe shell, and then your major benefits is when that safe shell system is going to be fully saturated. And we're going to make our last stop on the East Coast here at Tatum, Texas, and showcase Tatum High School. So Tatum High School was a, a very early adopter, the first one actually, of Envirofill. They installed a field with Envirofill in, tw in 2005, and then they reused Envirofill in 2013. So Envirofill comes with a 16 year warranty for it. It is meant to be used in a second life cycle. And it's the only infill that is, goes into your system homogeneously. So what happened in 2013 is that Tatum High School was able to extract that Envirofill, set it off to the side, take out their old turf, put in new turf, and then put in Envirofill for a second life cycle. Now, we talk about life cycle costs. Think of the cost savings that you will have when you do not need to haul away your old infill, purchase new infill, and then have the freight to bring in that second life cycle of infill. What we're showcasing here is that Tatum High School was actually able to reclaim 90% of their Envirofill from life cycle one to life cycle two. And as we talked about those tests earlier, you can still see that this field, after eight years, is still performing very highly. So what you would expect from day one to year 13 is what you're going to get with Envirofill with that nice, consistent play. Now with that, we're going to kick it over to Sean, and he's going to take you on a tour of the West Coast. Thanks, Andrew. Well, let's hop in the car, and we're going to leave the East Coast and head to the best coast. Uh, our first stop is in Reno, and while we might be in Nevada, we didn't gamble with the safety of this next project. At this stop, we're going to discuss our first safe shell installation, uh, and it actually wasn't in a sports field. Have you ever been to a museum before and seen those areas where kids can get in, play around, and dig for dinosaur bones? Um, at the Nevada Discovery Museum, safe shell was used for the medium to dig through. Now, one of the questions that we get about our safe shell product is, well, what if my kid has a nut allergy? You know, will this infill affect them in any way? And that was certainly top of mind as we brought this product to market. If you have a nut allergy, you're actually allergic to the protein in the nut, not the shell. So safe shell goes through a chemical-free manufacturing process that uses both heat and friction to remove any residual nut protein down to below USDA food grade levels. We test each batch of safe shell after manufacturing and they all test below the lowest detectable limits. In plain terms, if safe shell was food, you could serve it as an allergen free product. Now let's head south a little bit to my hometown of San Diego. As we look at these before and after pictures of Hilton Head Park, this project will help us answer one of the questions that was sent in to us before the webinar. And that was what information is there 
to help convince the school board of the benefits of synthetic turf. While this isn't a school field, many of the benefits will be the same. As we look at the before pictures, we can see that the park wasn't well maintained and got very little use. Here in Southern California, we have intermittent to constant drought. So watering a large field is financially prohibitive to impossible, depending on the location. Also maintaining a natural grass field takes many man hours at a significant cost. San Diego County wanted to make sure that this park was usable again. Um, you can see that it's set up for baseball and softball in one corner. It has a large open area for multi-sport use. Flag football, soccer, rugby clubs, um, they all now use this field during various parts of the year. By using synthetic turf, they took a poorly maintained unsafe field and turned it into a vibrant part of the community. In addition to the turf, they chose Envirofill as the infill because it's the lowest maintenance infill you can use on a synthetic turf installation. It's dense, so it stays put. There's minimal flyout and migration and the microban antimicrobial technology helps keep this public area cleaner and safer. Now back to the question about how to encourage a school board to look at the benefits of a synthetic turf field. At a school, you have not only the football team using the field to practice and play, but many times there are other significant demands on a field. The soccer team, baseball team, track and field, um, even the band, they all need a place to practice. That much use would destroy a natural field, while a synthetic turf field will give you almost 24-7 uptime. Next, we're going to head up the coast of Washington State to take a look at a couple of projects. First up is going to be Kent Meridian High School in Seattle. Here at Kent Meridian, they installed a synthetic turf um, field, uh, baseball field, both the infield and the outfield at this complex. What's hard to see in the picture is that there's a fence along the outside edge of the outfield. Now imagine that you're an outfielder, the batter is up, he's swinging for the fence and the ball is headed your way. You start running, your gloves up in the air, the sun's in your eyes and bam, you run right into that fence. Many synthetic baseball fields today are being designed using the same turf and the same infill for the entire outfield. But here at Kent Meridian, safety was top of mind. They have a warning track on that outside edge where the turf and the infill changes. The turf is less dense, which exposes more infill. So the player gets a tactile cue underfoot that lets them know where they are on the field. Well as an auditory cue because his cleats will sound different on the safe shell than they do on the outfield infill. Next, we have what a complete baseball system looks like using both Envirofill and Safe Shell. In the infield, we typically recommend using a shorter turf in conjunction with Envirofill to give the infielders the predictable surface and ball response that they're used to. Around the baseline, Envirofill makes it easy to slide without damaging the turf fibers. In the outfield, you can use Envirofill and forego a pad here to help reduce expenses. And finally, safe shell in the warning track to give the players those auditory uh, and tactile cues for safety. Our ninth and final stop is in Pierce County, Washington. Here at Pierce County, they were converting a soccer multi-purpose field as well as a baseball infield. As we talk about this project, it will also address several cost-related questions that were sent in prior to the webinar. Aside from cost, one of the key issues that Pierce County was solving for was sustainability and ultimately reusability. They looked at a traditional sand and rubber system with no pad, and that came in at about a million dollars. An Envirofill system over a pad was at about 1.3 million, and finally, they looked at a cork and sand field, and that came in at 1.4. After comparing all three, what they found was that an Envirofill system would save them about $425,000 over three life cycles of replacing these fields. There are two prices that you pay for a field, the price you pay today to install it, and then the price of ownership over the replacement cycles in the future. 
While Envirofill may be a little bit more today, it is the most cost-effective, lowest maintenance, and most sustainable, environmentally friendly infill that you can use. If you go to our website, you can see the video of Benjamin Barrett. He was the project manager for these field replacements, and he discusses their decision-making process there. So that concludes our tour of a few of the over 215 sports fields that use Envirofill and Safe Shell systems in the United States. But before we wrap up, let's make one more stop at a natural field. As the synthetic turf industry has evolved over the years, the gold standard has become how close can we get a synthetic field to play like a natural field. Here we'll look at a natural field against an Envirofill, safe shell and sand rubber field. The testing numbers for the natural field come from a highly maintained professional field at a stadium you would all recognize. Money is no object here, so this natural field is truly the best of the best. Now, Andrew has already gone over the definitions um, of the various tests, so we'll just take a quick look at the numbers and then natural field. GMAX at 74, rotational resistance 38, through vertical deformation, energy restitution, and then finally the HIC number there at 526. As we scroll down this page and look at the Envirofill and Safe Shell systems, you'll notice that the numbers are very close. GMAX is well within range, rotational resistance and vertical deformation, both very close. Energy restitution is what we would expect to see from a synthetic surface, and HIC is well within range as well. In that far right column, we can see that the Envirofill field is within 13% of the natural field performance numbers. And the Safe Shell system is within 17% of this premier natural field. Now down at the bottom in the red line is the sand rubber system. And it's the furthest away from natural field performance. That higher GMAX score is gonna make for a harder surface over time. Higher energy restitution, which means more fatigue on the athletes as they play and a HIC value that is out of the acceptable range. If you're trying to really mimic um, the performance of a natural field, there are certainly better options today than the old sand and rubber systems. We've covered quite a bit of information today. So as we, we begin to wrap up, here's just a couple of takeaways. Low maintenance. Envirofill is the lowest maintenance alternative infill on the market and safe shell is the lowest maintenance natural in fill on the market. We talked about the fields at UNC that withstood severe flooding with no infill migration and the fields in New York City that replaced their natural infill with safe shell and have had no maintenance issues since. Reliable performance. Both products are consistent and provide a reliable playing surface to the athletes. With over 215 fields in the ground, we have the experience and the testing to support those claims. And lastly, risk reduction. As we saw at Kent Meridian with their safe shell warning track and at Hollandale with the temperature reduction, uh, these infills help provide a safer playing surface for your athletes. As I mentioned, we've talked about a lot of information today. Um, if you'd like some hard copies, of any of the marketing materials or any of the testing results that we've covered, uh, please sign up for our partner portal. If you go to our website, usgreentech.com, scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see the partner portal button. Click there to sign up and we'll give you access to all these materials um, and testing documents. Now, before we get to the Q&A portion of the program, um, help us understand what you'd like to learn more about. Um, please respond to this poll that should be popping up on your screen uh, and let us know how we can help you moving forward. You may need to click on poll in progress if you don't currently see it. While you're answering that, I'd like to take a moment and thank you all for your interest and your attention today. And if you have any questions, please use that Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. Brad, I'll turn it back over to you. Sean, Andrew, thank you so much. Um, great information. I hope you all on the call um, felt the same way. 
Um, you know, as Sean mentioned there, and as you saw, we were only able to get to about nine different locations. Obviously, there are a lot of other different projects and case studies throughout the country. So if you uh, did not see one, you know, closer to your region, please engage with us. We'd love to learn um, about some of the challenges or, or maybe projects that you're considering in the future. And hopefully we can uh, kind of connect you to a local reference uh, as a result. So um, it looks like we've probably had a little bit of time here for people to answer the poll. We're going to jump over to the Q&A session. Um, and first one up, Andrew, this is probably for you um, as it relates to flooding and, and the Chapel Hill project. Was siltation from floodwaters any problem? I'm not quite sure if this next part um, is referencing that particular project, but my recollection from being flooded was the deposition of a couple inches of silt when floodwaters receded. As it relates to that case study, Andrew, any, um, anything you can elaborate as it relates to silt? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. So we weren't there uh, the day after the floodwaters rescinded, but we were sent pictures and how they attacked it, because it was an issue, is that they had their staff members out there with the backpack style leaf blowers and they were blowing it all off the field that way. So that's how they handled that situation. Thanks, Andrew. Second one here, have you done any design or testing for use in a playground? Popular, popular application for sure. Sean, do you wanna take that one? Sure, Brad. Yeah, thanks for the question. So I'm um, on the landscape side of the market. Um, we typically see Envirofill as one of the top infills that's specified for use on, on synthetic turf playgrounds. Um, by using Envirofill, um, there'll be no negative impact on your critical fall height testing and, and over you know, your, your typical playground pad, it should give you a little bit of advantage or benefit um, by using the product. Again, back to our partner portal, um, all that information is contained there along with playground testing. Excellent. Um, let's see. So this one, I, I would say probably either of you could take, um, will these infills help us with the ball interaction with the playing surface? Looking for one where the performance is more like on our natural field. So Sean, I don't know if that kind of ties back to the natural performance uh, comparison chart that we covered. Anything more to add there? Yeah, so I think the natural um, field comparison chart as well as the the baseball design chart um, kind of speaks to that so like on a baseball infield you know by using a little bit shorter turf and using envirofill you're going to get that more typical feel that players are used to and your ball response is going to be much more similar to a natural field than if you went with maybe a rubber infill and a taller turf so it really is about the entire design of the system um, but both Envirofill and Safe Show will help you get to that more natural ball response. Yeah, Brad, yeah. I was actually talking to an AD about that for in a high school up in New York, uh, maybe six months ago. And he was so excited to tell me this story because his soccer coach came running into his office to get him. And they were doing a drill where they had the players lined up about 30 yards away from each other, straight on, and they had cones on the outside and the, the goal was to kick the ball around the cone and have it curl back to the player that was straight ahead of them and the soccer coach was so excited to share this with the ad that he said on their old crumb rubber field they couldn't do that drill they couldn't complete it on natural grass they could and on their field with envirofill they could do that drill so he said it was the most uh natural like field that they had played on Thanks, Andrew. I appreciate that. And Sean as well. I mean, that's definitely a good one to dig a little further in. So looking forward to um, some follow-ups there, um, just as it relates to, to your specific situation too. Um, do these infills require different installation equipment? I'm happy to take that. Um, you know, generally speaking, or I guess the short answer would be no. Um, I think that's one of the things that you will find as, as something that really stands out in a differentiator with both Safe Shell and uh, Envirofill is the ease of use and the ease of installation. So, you know, your standard hopper machines, um, drop spreaders, all equipment that can be used with both Safe Shell uh, and Envirofill. 
So nothing uh, unique required. Hey, Brad, one more thing. One more thing to mention uh, in relation to the playground question. Um, so today's presentation was a little bit more sports focused. Um, on June 3rd at 3 p.m., we're also going to have a webinar that's going to be more landscape focused, and it's going to touch on playgrounds in a little bit more detail. Um, so happy to get you that information um, if you'd like to join that webinar as well. Yep, great point, Sean. How can rubber sand infill be removed and replaced with an environmentally safer product? Excellent question. Um, Andrew, do you want to take that one? Yeah, so the, the equipment's there. That, that's the biggest piece is that the equipment exists today to pull out uh, the infill that you have in if you're not satisfied with it and put in uh, a different progressive infill if you'd like. But the biggest key to that is that you must have a shock absorbing pad on those systems. So if you have a one of the old chrome rubber sand systems that Brad showed earlier in the slides, you wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, the vast majority of the new progressive infills do not have any type of resiliency, so they don't have that same squish and give to them. That's why they feel nice underfoot, but as it comes to head safety, that's where the, plat the pad really comes into play. So the biggest takeaways are, yes, you can do it, if you've got a pad, the equipment exists for you. Yeah, and it looks like we've got at least one more here. What is the average cost difference between a creme rubber infill and the Envirofill and Safe Shell infills? I know, I think Sean, you touched on that with the, um, with the Washington case study. Um, I don't believe we had mentioned Safe Shell in there, but um, there were three different systems being evaluated. You wanna to touch on that once again? Sure, yeah. So when Pierce County was looking at replacing their field, you know, they did a, a very in-depth study on the cost side of things. And for their project, you know, a typical sand rubber system is going to be at that million dollar mark. Um, they looked at cork as their organic or natural infill, and that was going to be about 1.4 million, which included a pad. And then Envirofill came in at 1.3 million, so a little bit less than the cork. Now, you know, they also looked long-term over multiple life cycles in the future. With Envirofill, you can reuse that product and reuse roughly 90% of it. So they were able to determine over multiple life cycles of that field, Envirofill was going to provide a significant cost savings to them um, versus the sand and rubber or the cork and sand. Um, now, when you're installing a safe shell field, we find that they are typically, you know, relatively close in price to Envirofill. So hopefully that sheds a little bit more light on the cost. Um, if you've got a particular project you'd like to talk about, um, it's a little bit easier once we know all the details, size of the field, turf spec, the amount of infill that's gonna be needed um, to get a little bit more in depth on the cost question. Yeah, obviously a lot of variables um, always relating to, um, to the cost of these projects. Um, what we're finding is um, Safe Shell, uh, you know, as as it relates to natural infill, it's definitely being one of the most economic on the market. Um, can these infills help with field hygiene? A very important topic these days. So um, field hygiene, yeah, I mean, we, we briefly touched on that as it relates to the antimicrobial technology that's in Envirofill. So, I mean, that's, that's one of, if not the only infills that actually offer kind of proactive um, proactive bacterial resistance and bacterial efficacy. So it is a, a hot topic um, as it should be uh, always. So Envirofill can work 24 seven to help fight against uh, bacterial mold, mildew, definitely keeping, keeping the field, keeping the surface more sanitary at the time. Any projects outside of the states currently using Safe Shell or Envirofill? And if so, what is the feedback? Um, we, we don't currently have any um, fields um, like we've been talking about today um, outside of the, the US or North America. Um, we have used the Envirofill product in various uh, golf and tennis applications throughout the world, you know, everywhere from Russia to Singapore. So some other unique benefits for Envirofill is showing its versatility there, but um, currently no fields, although um, heavy interest in the European market currently. Uh, 
And team, I think that is the last question we have had submitted. Um, so we'll probably wrap it up there. Um, you'll see our information on the screen. Um, please reach out to, to us directly. Um, please also expect some follow-up here in the next couple of days just to make sure that we, we really um, kind of understand um, your projects and answer any other additional questions you may have one-on-one. -on -one. But um, mostly, again, we really appreciate your time to get today. Um, we thank you for, for taking so much time out of your day. And hopefully you found this um, information handy and something to use in the future. So we look forward to speaking with you um, in the coming days. Thanks again.